the Objective News Network, the debt ceiling, down to the wire, yet again. This is John Nasho reporting for the Objective News Network. Well, we're down to the wire again. As of the date of taping this broadcast, May 9, 2023, President Biden, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Senate Republican Mitch McConnell, and Representative Hakeem Jeffries, Leader of the House, have seven days to raise the debt limit. Otherwise, Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen warns of a great economic calamity. The current national debt stands at over $31 trillion. This includes paying for federal employees, the military, Social Security, and Medicare, as well as interest on the national debt and tax refunds. The debt ceiling has been raised 74 times from March 1962 to May 2011 including 18 times under Ronald Reagan, eight times under Bill Clinton, seven times under George W. Bush, and five times under Barack Obama. In practice, the debt ceiling has never been reduced. In the face of this terrible fiscal mismanagement by so many past presidents and Congress, The exponential rise in the huge size and growth of the national debt has now grown to over 100% of our gross domestic product. So why is it so important to reduce our national debt? Put in the simplest terms, If the national debt is allowed to continue to rise at current rates, it will mean a loss of confidence in the power of the U.S. economy to pay off its debts. This means our country will have less investment. Investment is essential to make our GDP grow, which in turn holds the promise of making more money than we, as a nation, spend. And if you don't believe the consequences of delaying the inevitable, like we are doing right at this very moment, just look back to 2011, the last time the U.S. was seen as at serious risk of default. Negotiations went down to the wire, just like they're doing now before a compromise deal including a $900 billion in spending cuts over 10 years was announced just before the deadline. The 2011 standoff prompted a downgrade in the U.S. credit rating, sent the stock market plunging, and is estimated to have cost the public at least $1.3 billion in a higher borrowing costs that year alone. All of this knowing full well that the U.S. debt was more than 100% of our gross domestic product. But our government leaders continue to spend on mandatory programs like Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid that arose from the socialist solutions to pay for getting us out of the Great Depression and have remained in place. As things have turned out, Social Security alone stands to go insolvent by 2034. That's just 11 years away. Let's face it, a country that spends more than it takes in in new revenues to grow its economy e.g. expand our GDP, over time is destined to go bankrupt. With that said, we also need to recognize that it took us many decades to get in the economically irresponsible place we are today. In order to avoid our own future economic failure, America must move to regain the world's confidence in the U.S. dollar, 
by avoiding yet another credit worth worthiness downgrade like we experienced after the 2011 debacle of trying to avoid the inevitable. At 4 p.m. today, there was an office, Oval Office session among the president, our congressional leaders. Everyone walked away after the meeting with no agreement. Another sad day for our country. Hopefully, President Biden and our leaders will all come to their senses and begin to act in a fiscally responsible manner that is in the best long-term interest of the American people and our nation. America needs a plan and a long-term plan to solve the problem. It is what it is for May 12, 2023. Thank you for watching, and we and we thank you for taking the time to watch our news broadcast. Here at ONN, we try to objectively analyze the news issues of the day to give you the tools you need to make our country and the world a better place. This is John Nacio signing off for the Objective News Network. We hope to see you the next time.